What up, everybody? It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. Current, coming to you live and direct. I found real hot in the mic. Hey, it's currently 8.05 out in the East. 7.05 for my central standing people. 6.05 for my mountain people. And 5.05 out there for my West Coast people. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. This is the podcast where we come to you every week. Try to every week. We bring to you sports and we bring it to you live and direct. No hot takes, no nonsense when it comes to sports. Opinionated, thoughtful takes on sports. With that said, we got a lot of things to dive into and get into this week. And we're going to start off, we're going to preview the National Football League um, draft. The draft is coming up here on 8 o'clock this coming Thursday. And we just had a pre-discussion um, about the draft. Sometimes they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so we'll talk about the drafts and who might take who and who might fall to where and who's whispering who's there about this person. But we'll do that. We'll also talk about MOB, Major League Baseball. Yes, we talk about baseball on this podcast. Um, we'll talk about MOB. We'll talk about something interesting that happened a couple of days ago. The uh, Madison Baumgartner, he pitched a no-hitter, or didn't he? DW was outraged about this, so we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll also talk about the National Basketball League. Mikey bought, Michael uh, Mike Mills brought this to my attention about the National Basketball Association wanting to keep the play-in game. As we discussed last week, what does the NBA want to do with the preseason? I mean, excuse me, sorry, with the regular season. Do they want to keep it to be, hmm, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. We'll meet with the crew. We'll start off with going from my left to right. D-Dub, what's up? What's up, fam? How you doing? Sports Chasers Podcast, we back again. We're going to do it. Kev, there's a lot of garbage going on. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what... We might have to change our, our title from Sports Chaser to just I don't I don't know because this is I don't know I can't I, I can't deal with the the sports stuff sometimes man because it's just ridiculous man and I don't know what they're doing but they seem to be going like backwards and the ratings are reflecting it but go ahead we'll get to that we'll we'll go to it again going from my left to right da um, the da is on da talk to the people. Hey yo, what's good, everybody? Um, you know we're here chop it up, man. We see what makes sense. Uh, yeah, it probably won't make sense, but you know <laughs> we'll be here for the next hour. All right, yeah. so bada bing. Thank you, DA. We go with uh, the <laughs> one, James Eric. What's up, man? Sports Chasers family, what's good with y'all, man? What's good? What's good, man? Um, I- I'm just. I'm gonna just agree with my fellow Podgeman, man. It's a lot of bullshit going on, but uh, as always, we we're here to uh, you know try to make a little bit of sense out of it. I don't know how much we're gonna do, but uh, we're gonna do our best as always. Thanks, James, Eric, and by the way, we have a Onyx um, reunion right here on this podcast, as you can see. Shout out to Onyx, Mike Mills, last release. What's up, brother? Greed is a salutation. It's Konichiwa to those in Japan. It's your boy Mills Kuiper Jr., draft analyst extraordinaire. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. They was literally yelling at Mike about five minutes ago. Uh, I love it though. Mills Kuiper Jr. Mills Kuiper Jr. <laughs> Mills Kuiper. Boy, I, I hope you better than him. Boy, I, uh, I yeah, yeah. Him. Oh, <laughs> It'd be much worse. Definitely. Yeah, old punk. <laughs> Pumpkin pie eating motherfucker. <laughs> whoa, 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 now, whoa, now. Pumpkin, <laughs> pumpkin pie is delectables. Pumpkin pie is good. Oh man. Whoa, whoa, da. Oh, okay. All right, let's 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 yeah, go. He coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 start off here. Well, um, well, we'll get to the draft last. I think we we need to address some other issues. 
let's uh mike mike will lead us off i don't know if mike is prepared he should be prepared but maybe i'm putting him on the spot mike explain to me we'll talk about the nba what did you read today on regards of the nba what they're doing i read that the nba is strongly considering no strongly considering i didn't say definite strongly considering doing the playing game for every season after this one for keeping it permanently that's what i read today and what is your thoughts that shit is stupid i mean we was talking about how you make the how do you make the regular season more important i guess that's an incentive maybe that's what they was thinking about because there's no other reason possible that that made sense that you're going to kick whatever team was in the top eight out because you want to give some bottom feeders a chance that don't make no sense so my question to you, I think I, I might have posed this last week. I might have to go back and look at it. I mean, they treat the the NBA currently as they do, in my opinion. They treat the regular season pretty much like the preseason right now. Why don't they just do a uh, a tournament? I mean, I know I'm, I'm being funny when I'm asking that, but, but go ahead. Kevin, I don't think he's being funny. I think it's the truth. These guys don't care about the regular season. They don't really care about nothing other than going to the playoffs and and, and trying to win the championship. And I I blame the NBA as and and the commissioner for not trying to spice up the uh, regular season. And and not the way to do it is not by adding in the games like like Mike Miller said. For the you know the bottom feeders, yo, if you're not good to get the AC, you just not good enough to get the AC. It shouldn't be no playing and all this other stuff. It was fun, but it's 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 it's, it's pointless. Just yo, you you play 82 games, so 82 games is enough time to get it to get it right to see who gets in. It's been like this for a while. It's worked, so I don't understand. What do you what are we doing? What are, what, why? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, don't, it don't make no sense. I think you should just leave it as it is. And, or, you know, cut the games down. If you want to spice it, if, if, to me, if I want to focus, spice the game up, I know they ain't going to go for it because they, you know, they want to, it's the money and everything else. Now get back the money. So do you right. remember, D-Dub, do you remember, the, the, I, I want to say it was the lockout year when I want to say- the games. I, after the Lakers and Nets played the um, championship and the, and the Lakers beat them in five, uh-huh. um, there was a strike or a lockout. To me, that was the best season. Absolutely. Because, hey, you know, they, every night they say, oh, shoot, the Nets, I think, lost their first one out of, they went one and 10, and that was it. And they were done. They was done. That was it. That was yes, it. Then, so, I mean, to me, for the fans, that would be a way to spice up the game and make it where, you know, you have to put, you're playing for something. That's why the NFL is thrive. That's why the NFL does so well. Does so well because the games are short. One, two, a lot, a lot of people don't see it and I don't want to mess up their pockets, but the guaranteed money makes people think differently. I have to play to order to get paid. And I have to play well. I have to play at the high level. And I can't take nights off. I got to play. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I know we might be too far gone for the uh, for the NBA. But, you know, I, these I, guys these guys don't care. I mean, it's evident they don't care because they take nights off. They got more PTO than all of us combined. <laughs> and we got regular jobs. It's, it's uh... Go ahead, DA. The NBA is still, you know, they call that used car salesman shit, you know? always trying to find another way to, you know, bring the hype or do this and do that. Crazy Eddie. Um, yeah, the reality is that the, it, it, these type of corporate decisions always come from top down. So, you know, uh, the owners, they're looking for a way to drum up money because they still owe money from last year. Those marketing contracts that they had where they wasn't getting anybody in the stadiums. And they still might not get anybody in the stadiums next year. It's not guaranteed. It, it's just not guaranteed that's going to happen. So 
they look they're, they're they're hemorrhaging and they're trying to figure out a way to to get you know to at least bring people back into the door or drum up um uh, viewership uh they always get every year they get really upset around draft time because we talk about the nfl is taking up more months of the year and and uh baseball's numbers are up people are watching more you know it, basketball is still trying to figure out the best way to do it i guess and i don't know if there is a way right so there's a few things that we i believe we can chalk up and say ain't going to happen and one is making a shorter season not going to happen because the owners would have to be on board with that. And billionaires are not in the business of making less money. They're just not going to do that. You know, they're there to make more money. So, you know, as, as far as the rules, well, silver works for the owners, man. So if, if they wanted them to stop these guys from doing this, you could just find them for not playing. It's not crazy. Oh, no, you cannot do that because I'm hurt for real. It doesn't matter to me whether, whatever you are. If, if it's collective bargained, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. So it's all about that. This is business, man. And like I said, man, you know, years ago, I said, everybody believes that owners of these major sports franchises want to win. No, they don't. They want to make a profit. That is their first and prime job. Then why should we care? Profit. Why should we care, DA? You tell us why should I care? You shouldn't, but you'll go anyway. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. That's a you thing, not a me thing, right? So you shouldn't care. If yeah, you want to be Spike Lee, Spike Lee and sit in the front row and carry your little ass back up there and sit in the front row. Dolan already told you, B, we only hear fourth place this year by happenstance. Because he's going to set a fire to the whole motherfucker. He ain't care. He, def he definitely was. He ain't care, man. Dolan was finna so, blow that up. <laughs> you know it, Mike. So this is what I try to say to people, man. You got to understand when we, when we say who's wrong and who's right, it always starts at the top, man. You know, and that's where that money's at. Because believe me, when 2012, when the Spurs, the first time they held out those three players, Tim Duncan, um, um, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili, the commissioner fined the team for sending those guys out. Period. Fact. Factoid. Was that David Stern still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yes. David Stern. Mm hmm. There yeah. you go. And, no, 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 no. Don't give him no props because his ass slid all the way fuck back. Wait a minute. All right. No, no, no. He <laughs> slid back. He stopped <laughs> finding after that first time. So fuck his dead ass too. All right. Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, no, nah, I'm, yo, listen, man. If we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Go ahead, dude. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. He slid his ass back too. All right. Because he, he, he fine pop for that shit. Yeah. But when other dudes started doing them, he stopped finding. Hasn't been a fine since 2012. So if the league really cared about it, they could have did something about it. It's not that hard, man. It's really not that hard. Okay. All you gotta do is go get 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 CP3. He's the rep. Work out something in the side room. This is what we're gonna do. If you do this, this is what we gonna boom, 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 and we out. You got no more load matching. You know, and if you're a rich guy like LeBron, then you can do it and you can pay your money, man. It's fine. If you want right, to pay right, your fines, right. I got no if problem you, with it. If you want to pay the fine, fine. Yeah, I got no problem with it. But see, like I said, top down, man. Top down. And it's it's effed up, man, but that's, that's how it shit went down. Eric, James Eric, you sitting... Patiently. patiently waiting. Patiently. Sorry, we know Sorry, this. We know this. The, the fellow, fellow, the fellow clansmen. Uh, I mean, the clansmen. Whoa. The fellow podsmen. <laughs> you yeah. said what? Yeah. Ooh, Yo, Wu Tang, might... man. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Yeah. Anyway, the fellow <laughs> I said everything that I, that I was going to say, man. Um, Yo, know, if they really, first of all, the, the original question, um, it's stupid. 
it was all fun and games last year. You had your little bubble, your little bubblicious uh, uh, little league that you had last year. You tried to get Zion. You was desperate to get Zion on, on mainstream TV. We all Thanks. know that's why Thanks. they did it. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Um, and now they're going because Zion is failing yet again. They trying to get him back in the limelight, the snap the third. So I mean, really, you know what I'm saying? They are already pushing these stars because they see everybody that, gets a trophy. Yeah, yeah. You get one, you get one. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it's the participation trophy. So, but it's a stupid idea. I don't know why they why they even came up with that. But, it's stupid. Um, and just it. like just like just like um, Kev said, man. Um, and I think everybody said it too. If they really wanted to change things, they could do it. You know what I'm saying? The best way, in my opinion, if you want, if you want everybody engaged from the players to the coaches to the fans and everything, yo, you shorten the season. So this how if you go 0 for 5, 0 for 10, guess what? You there's no switch for you to turn on and off. For you, oh, we just gonna turn it on when we get to the playoffs. No, you too far gone now. So um if you was to do that, then then you might have a better product. Well. That would be one of the reasons to get a better product out there on the court. But um, Eric, what about idea. what? So if you was the commissioner, if you if you had to come into basketball, if you was the commissioner, you can, and you had Carl Blanc to just do anything right now, and you was like, you wanted to change the amount of games being played. How many games you think reasonably would you 58, change? Fifty-eight, I think, is a sweet spot. Fifty to fifty-eight, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, I would bring back the amnesty clause. So when you get when you get guys on these contracts and you know good and well you shouldn't have did it, at least you have that uh, that amnesty right. The guy gets paid, you get him off the books, boom boom. He can sign somebody. A yearly else. amnesty clause? Nah, once every five years. Okay, I can see that. That that should be that should be good enough for the length of a contract. That that should be good enough. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're stupid enough, and but you can't use it on the same player. So you bring that if you bring the same player back and you sign them again. Nah, you stuck. Um, it, it's it's a bunch of different things that they can do, man. Um, you 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 have to. You're paying way too much money for these guys that are doing. They're not living up to the contract. We, is, all, we, we always talk about that, man. Coaches, where, players, everybody. Where's MC for Kevin Love? Free Kevin Love. Yo, the way Kevin Love slapped that ball when the referee gave it to him, I felt the frustration in Kevin Love right then and there. Be. He he claims it was from the refs, but it, it gotta be. He gotta hate LeBron James for bringing him to Cleveland well, and leaving him there. Let's, oh let's go. <laughs> Listen, hear me hey, out. Hey, what the young boy said? Oh God, he gotta hate. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Listen, the reason why I, I did that. VA <laughs> was on the phone talking before I I came in and set up and and VA was like, yo. Kevin Love, I don't want to hear anything. You took the check. Yeah, yeah. You took the check. I, I, you took the check. You, you I, don't, took, I don't give a fuck. You, you grow, man. You, you, st- you stood behind the Wizard of Oz and you opened the curtain. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, this, all right, I get one championship. All right, cool. So I, I, I really. He should have did the Braun back. Braun was signing them one and ones. What Braun doing? Kevin, and, we want to give you five years. What Braun doing? Oh, he got a two and one. Give me what he got. I want one of them. He, he yeah, should have followed. He should have followed uh, Brother Kyrie. And say, so, you yeah, know well, what, the writing is on the wall. He ain't gonna leave me stuck like Chuck. I'm out of here. So, you know, I, I think the reality is that first off, we're not gonna use mental illness for every time this motherfucker has a problem. That's one. All right. I'm just letting you know that, right? We're not gonna do that shit. One hundred percent. I'm go ahead, right. D. Part two is the dude wasn't that good from Jump Street. See, this is what cats don't remember. He came oh, in the middle. Whoa, whoa, oh, 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 no, oh, 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 I got oh, you, Mike. Oh, 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 you got your, here come your empty calories. <laughs> after, after Kevin Garnett and them came out of Minnesota. Whoa. I, he, was the, oh, 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 he was the only thing out there smoking. Okay. Scoring 24 points, 12 rebounds a game. Everybody double, double, thought dude. this motherfucker was a superstar. And he wasn't a superstar. He was a third best, maybe, on the championship team. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm oh, not oh, going to oh, that. No, no, no. No, no, Kevin no, Love no, got, no. No. Yes. I'm, no, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let, no, no, we going to go there. Give me some love. What I'm go telling ahead. you with this is that the first five years when dude do all that shit in the NBA, playing for Minnesota, he was the only motherfucker on the team. Period. It was him, Don Maker, and a bunch of light-skinned dudes. Period. That was it. 
right? He said, Thorn so, maker. <laughs> so he did his thing, right? Right, he did his thing, moved out, got the jumper, went to Cleveland, right? They won their championship in Cleveland, right? LeBron went to the office, right? And he got him and Tristan and JR Paper. All three of them got signed big money, boom, on LeBron strength, right? Evidently, Tristan's shit was different because he was out of there and they just didn't want JR anymore or whatever it was, right? Now, you have this dude stuck there, right? So he's by himself there now. You tell me if dude was such a fucking all-star before, why is he not one now? Injuries. Oh, oh, oh Colin Stetson taking all the shots from him. Come on, man. But I think that's that's different. I would say this. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Kevin Love was a superstar, but he was a star. He was an all-star every year. He comes down. It's just it's the Chris Bosh factor. You, you come down and you play a totally different style of ball where where you was dominant where you was at before you come in Freeze. with the with the with the buddy with the buddy gang james system and yeah you are the third best player because you're not even getting the touches that you used to get preach so go ahead mike mike the let, uh, um dear let mike uh, rebut you go ahead mike and he wasn't the only one out there al jefferson was a 20 and 10 guy all-star who else he had out there nikola pekovich was decent for a couple years John, he had young Johnny Flynn before the hip injury. Oh, he had some people. Yeah, we we Johnny. I can't even co sign that Johnny, Johnny Flynn was there like a half a season. B. And, you, and man. part of that, he had you, bad ankles. Yeah, because you know, my man shook him up in the tournament, and y'all Johnny Flynn was no good after that. I'm not going to disrespect my son Johnny Flynn. This <laughs> is Johnny not Flynn was nice in Syracuse, Syracuse, man. You're not going to have no Johnny Flynn slander. He, he, he <laughs> bought me a bunch of bread in Syracuse. Like I said. Listen, Kevin Love, like he said too, the Chris Bosh syndrome. LeBron kills big men. The only one that he hasn't killed is Anthony Davis. Because look at, because AD don't got a regular big man skill set. But AD that's about the, to kill himself. But that, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, yeah that's I'm, paper I'm, man. But besides that, LeBron kills bigs. How many bigs have LeBron ever oh, played with that excuse, ever put up hey, numbers? I'm sorry, guys, but all the little he kids. Kills please, he kills Elgowskis. All the little kids. Elgowskis. Please, please cover your ears, kids. Yo, if you don't bend over, you won't get fucked. <laughs> All right, host. So this is the next topic. <laughs> please control yourself. Yeah, so I, I, and I'm just saying, though, man, like I'm not, if we talking about accountability, real talk, now we, we gonna stop giving these dudes this. We gonna, we're gonna stop. Like, we're gonna stop, right? So I looked at his numbers and I saw what he did in Minnesota. And I'm not saying he sucked. What I'm saying was, he was not what they said he was. That's all. And, like, when, and, and with all those dudes leaving, and he's still there, why didn't he go back to those numbers? Because it's the same situation, just a different city, and you're five years older. Right? So D, get, get back to your game. D, he, in 2008, 2009, he scored 11. 2009, 2010, 14 points. 20, he got better. 2010, 2011, 20, uh, 20 points. Then he became 26 then he went to 18, then he 26 in his final year in Minnesota. Then that's when he went to Cleveland. They averaged 16 points that year in 24, 2014, 2015 season. 16, he averaged 19 in 2016, 2017. I guess that was an all-star year for him. In 2017, 2018, he averaged 17 points. I mean... I'm, I mean, he I'm, doesn't have bad numbers. He's not a, he's not a bad dude, but he's not... He's not that guy. He need, he not, need, uh, again. He, he going. I'm not he's saying going, he is. Yeah, I'm not saying he is. But <clears> what <throat> I'm saying is, we're not going to attribute anytime anything goes wrong to him being upset about the team sucks. So I'm 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 knocking the ball away. I'm, well, yeah. God, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you on that. I just did some more research. Kevin Martin, another twenty point score. He wasn't the only twenty point guy out there. Kevin, who? <laughs> You're not, not Martin. You're not going. You're not going to disrespect Kevin Martin like that, that's the guy. lights can do with all the parts in this here, right? Right. You know. Him. Yeah. yeah. Look, just yeah. like Monte. Look, just like Monte and 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 you're Larry gonna, Hughes and you're not the rest of dudes. Monte so, <laughs> so in six seasons with Minnesota, six seasons with Minnesota, he averaged 19 points per game. Goes to Cleveland seven years with Cleveland, he averaged 16 points a game. So, my point is again. Why the hell are we hitting the ball out of bounds? What are you mad about? What are we so upset about? Because the team sucks now? 
Well, I mean, if, it, if he's an all star, he's supposed to he's supposed to elevate the team. So what 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 has been the constant on the show? What 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 do we always say? If you take the bag, you need to take the responsibility. There you go. And we said it from Russell Wilson. We said it for uh, what's the quarterback now that got traded from the Eagles? Oh, it's oh Carson uh, Wentz. Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz, who's our poster child for getting the bag. Mm-hmm. Jared get Goff. Back, Jared Goff got the bag. It's Todd just, Gurley got a bag. Got a bag. Deshaun Watson. Got bag, 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 bag. Shout out yeah. to Todd Gurley. He got a bunch of bags in the bag. Yeah, but, in it. Yeah, yeah. He oh, got some. Wait, wait, nope, nope, nope. I'm nope. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Nope, nope. What? Nope. Go ahead. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm out. We're yeah. not talking. We're not talking about Deshaun leave it to, Kelly. Go on to the topic. See, <laughs> see, see leave, leave, leave it to these motherfuckers. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and clean it up off the NBA. Yeah, go ahead. Look, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and say this, y'all. Okay? <laughs> There's only two guys, in my opinion, in the NBA that I came as, yeah, two guys that is worth what they get, okay? That is one is LeBron James and the other is Kevin Durant. Yes, they're injury prone. Yes, they're getting up there in years. But guess what? Wherever they go, they change stuff for the better uh, as far as the team goes. Now, we can we can dilly dally into all the all the technicalities behind that. That'll be for another time. But for a superstar that deserve max money. Those are the only two. I agree. Russell, Russell Westbrook, John Wall. Oh, and and, and I, I may throw Steph in there, he oh, he got no Curry in there. Yeah, Curry. I, I throw him in there too because the way he changed the game, he he made the big man ob- obsolete. So I throw you know him what? In there too. Don't throw him in there. Forget Steph Curry. Mm. Hey, okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. What, what, <laughs> we're gonna end this note. Um, the NBA. Um, like I said earlier, when I started out this conversation, the NBA has to me totally gone where the the regular season doesn't really mean anything. And we said last week, hey, if you're a fan of the NBA, man, vote with your dollars, man. Let them know. Don't watch. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and can't go and do that. No, yeah, and Kev, one more thing, man. Listen, as we talk about the NBA, um, people who listen to the podcast, listen, I know we are not the only ones. I know I'm not the only one that feel like this as I do research and I look and there's, there's people who've been in the game who has covered the game who have gone on record and said that the game is an inferior product, that the game is the same. Don't don't do it, D. Don't do it, D. Don't do it, D. I'm sorry. It's very predictable. Don't do it now. Okay. And they said, if you said that again, they're going to start shooting at us, D. Yeah, well, they start get the shooting because we I'll shoot back. (laughs) Shit, because you know it is what it is. I mean, they're everything is 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 it's a bad product, and you know what? I have yet seen or heard the commissioner nothing from this guy, nothing from this guy about how this game is being played now, the lack of physicality, the the, the lack of because when you cater to one guy and he's a superstar, yes, and we talk about when you cater to this one guy and you allow him to change up because what happens is you allow James to get in the game and you allow him to control everything. And what I mean by that is that he's able to take a play because he, his game is so different that he, he makes the big man, these guys just sit on the, on the outskirts and just wait for the ball while he goes up and down and bullies and play bully ball and runs right down the lane. And there's Somebody nothing got, nothing being called. Dudes just got to say, no, I'm not going to play with you, dog. Right. So his game is not really conducive for you as the, but you take the check. And this is this yeah. is where I don't feel sorry for Kevin Love. I, I believe. Oh, you don't feel sorry for Dwayne Wade, the great Dwayne Wade, when no. he was left. Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade. Is rich. He, yeah. He got two chips out of the deal. He knew what he was doing. Why would we feel bad for Dwayne Wade? Well, maybe the first season, he looked a little sick of LeBron. Yeah, but yeah. after that, he was all right. I just think, man, it's some BS, man. And the reality is this, man. It's, it's still a financial thing. Um, uh, it still comes top down. Silver's not going to do anything. 
because nope. his bosses didn't tell him to do anything. Nope. He's well, not going to do know. anything because his bosses didn't tell him to do anything. Well, listen, when the, when the, listen, the game is suffering or, already, yeah. and it may not, you know, it may not happen now, but people are tuning out. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I Including agree myself. You. I just, I agree. But I just have a job to do tonight, but. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I just think, you know, when we talk about this, and this is for all of you guys, please. Um, I think there's so many factors and, you know, your man Buddy is one. Also, the fact that Buddy's about to leave and the, the NBA always has a very horrible succession plan. They oh, do yeah. it all the time, man. And it's yeah. only because they don't trust the stars that are there. Right. Nope. They, they put don't put all, they put all the eggs in this one basket with this guy. Yeah. And then yeah. the succession plan to well, leave because they keep on everything is on this person instead of spreading the love around to these other mean, stars. Which goes to to to, to Eric with the, his his take on um Brother Zion, who's gonna get better, is gonna be a better player. Oh, yeah. Luka Doncic is good and will continue to be good. He's going to be a great player. Um, I think the league is actually in a better place than it was when Michael broke out. Like, real talk. Like, there's a I lot of dudes. There's, there's a lot of guys. But the league doesn't trust them. Mm -hmm. The league, mm -hmm. the, the owners, the, the presidents, the, the GMs, they don't trust what they already have. And I think it's, it, it's, it's horrible, man. Because you know, these kids... There's a, a, a nice dude I can name on every team, man. You know? There's a nice dude on every team. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? So, uh, I mean, you talk about Sacramento. Sacramento, you got De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Hill, and what's the old boy, uh, big boy from Duke, who he, he doesn't stink. Um, uh, what's the tall kid from Duke? Marvin and, Bagley. Uh, Marvin Bagley. And Harrison Barnes, like that we don't stink, but you disrespect the Kevin Love. You know what? Shut this podcast down. I'm not doing this tonight. <laughs> I ain't doing this tonight. He don't stink. Listen, listen. We're, we're gonna end this note. The NBA, they, they're gonna bad. We don't stink. Oh, sorry. They, they're they're drawing a line in the sand as far as I'm concerned with some of their fans. Some of their some of their fans. Some of their casual fans. They they'll keep appealing to, but um, I think they're doing a, a bad job of not. You know, doing whatever. But anyway, on that note, to make D Dub even more mad, let me read the story and let me go on to the next uh -oh. topic. Uh, this is from Yahoo Sports, Kevin Brown, and he reports this as early as 6 15 tonight. <clears throat> Dave, um, David, Dave, Davey Martinez thinks um Madison Bar Bumgarner definitely deserves a no-hitter originally appeared on sports NBC Sports Washington. Nationals manager Davey Martinez became the latest to voice their support for Arizona Diamondback pitcher Madison Bumgarner for being credited with a no-hitter for his complete seven-inning game on Sunday. Congratulations to him. It was awesome. I absolutely think he should be rewarded with a no-hitter, Martinez told media on Tuesday. Despite throwing a shutout in Arizona's 7 nothing win against Atlanta, Bumgarner's stellar performance was wasn't recognized as a no-hitter due to a 1991 rule that requires at least nine innings for a game in which a pitcher does not, doesn't give up any hits to be cleared a no-hitter. This is the first time a pitcher's through a complete game since the MLB started speeding proceedings up in double-headed schedule as a result of the coronavirus pandemic at the start of the season. Baumgartner was up to pitch after the Diamondbacks got seven innings out of um, Zay Gallon, who gave up this one hit and their 5 nothing win over the Braves earlier in the day. It is also the first time Baumgartner threw a game without giving up a hit in a Coppers career. It's a shame for a Coppers player like the three-time World Series champion Baumgartner is that this game doesn't count on such a small technicality. He did make the rules, he got 21 outs, and that was the game. So I definitely think he deserves a no hitter. So to give you some context, I believe this game took place on uh, Sunday. There was a double Sunday header evening. Sunday evening. There's there was um, because of the pandemic um, virus and Major League Baseball, um, their um, minor leagues are not started up yet. It should be starting, I believe, in May. So you know they have an attrition thing, and so basically the, this year they want to just. If they play a scheduled doubleheader, it will be seven innings per game. 
Um, and I'll say this. I know I'm supposed to be the host and moderator, but I have an opinion also. Baseball, to me, in the words of, of DA, they're, they're acting like used car salesmen. I, I don't need all the, the stuff. So the, the double header, we're only playing seven innings, professional baseball, major league baseball, since I've been growing up, it's been nine innings. That's what you do. And it's putting somebody on second base after, in the, in the, in when the excuse me, when we go into extra innings. I think that's a, another used car salesman thing. And with that said, DW, you have the floor. Go ahead, sir. Yo, again, again, I know I said spice up the game, but my God, come on, dog. I mean, this right here, this is like, it's ridiculous. You made up these rules to, to do a seven innings, and you don't even consider that the statistical part of it and then you don't want to give the man the credit for the no hitter, although y'all created this seven inning and not not to go to the nine inning. So I, I mean, I think it's just it's if it's seven innings, that means the game is complete. So if the game is right. So is if it's complete, and Major League Baseball deems it as a official game, why not give the man credit for a no hitter? It, it only makes sense to me. But because of the, the rules that they uh, the 1991 are uh, ruling for Major League Baseball and the committee uh, uh, defining that a no hitter only happens if nine a pitcher innings. completes nine innings. And I think again, they again, this is this is where management don't read their own rules in the in the manual and they come up and create some shit and then, they forgot that they created this shit, and then here you go. You know, so, so. Let, me, let me throw this in there. Got it. So, <clears throat> what happens when the game is shortened by rain? What happens then? It's a complete game, right? The game. That's where it's been. Oh, okay. All right. But I'll call Babe Ruth and just make sure I get the rules down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no. So let me ask you this. So. Roger Maris in 1961. I don't have nothing. I don't have the, the statistics in front of me. He might have played a couple of rain short games. Does his home runs not count? I'm just Barry Bonds. Hey, listen, man. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. don't talk, don't talk about Barry. Go ahead. I'm hey, just hey. saying. Hey, hey. Stuff counts. I don't know what you're saying. I just don't <laughs> think you should say it, whatever it is. I'm just saying. Barry's playing the range short game. He's hit two home runs into McCovey Cole. That don't count. Kev, when I heard this on he was, Monday, he was very mad. I said, "Did anybody see this? Did no because we didn't. Nobody's nobody. I don't guess nobody's seen it. And I just so happened to you know it was a late game, the afternoon game. So yeah, and I'm like, know. wait a minute, this guy's throwing no hitter and it's not going to count. Yeah, I was nope. a witness relocation. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> I don't know, man. Again, you know, you know I, I, what it is. You know what it is. Go ahead, Mike. That's the problem with baseball. See, baseball been around for so long. It's been around for what a hundred some years. Like they've been playing since forever. Yep. Yeah. So the purists, them people who got it in their heart, but, you know, baseball is the only game that really took forever to like adjust, like how long before they put in replay? But and then how long before this down the third? So it's the purists really fighting it. Ain't nobody else, who else is gonna fight a technicality like that? But somebody no who taking it to the heart for no reason. Yeah. So that. you gotta be aware, but, and then the other part is that was, we talked about this when they changed, when they saw about changing the rules. It was, it's always gonna be some little loophole that nobody thought about. Are you doing but, something like that? But Mike, let me ask a question, man. And now this is real talk, B. These dudes are billionaires, man. That too. This is what scares me. That you didn't think this shit out past around the corner. Like you, what the fuck? Did you not think this shit was like, there was not going to be any risk assessment when you guys brought up these rules? Like for real? They could have so paid me half a million dollars. I could have did that. So let me ask you this. Let me, and I know you asked the Michael check a question. So the runner that's on second base and the top of the 10th, 
What is that? I told you that was stupid too. <laughs> yeah, they should have did that. That, that, that was that, that was going to end up going in a bad place, and it still is. That, that's just dumb. It will end up going to a bad place, brother. I it, said it, it, here's my thing, and Mike talk about peers and stuff like that. Yes, Mike. Uh, baseball is definitely a numbers game. Baseball has always been a numbers game, meaning that historically, people care about numbers when it comes to baseball and things of that nature. And I just think when we start tinkering stuff, see, I think me and Dorian had this conversation the other night. Baseball, you have to get 27 outs. There's no time factor to it. There's nothing to it. You have to get 27 outs. There's no, you can run the clock out, you can kneel, you can hold the ball in the half court and, you know, no, none, of that. none of that. You must get 27 outs. Ask the 86 Red Sox. Ask the, the Texas Rangers against St. Louis in the World Series a couple of years ago. They were down to the last strike. The Rangers should have been the world champions, and St. Louis somehow won that game and went on to win game seven. It's actually man. That's what I like about baseball. You got to get 27 outs. Mm-hmm. So there's no kneeling, there's no nothing, none of that. James, go ahead. What's your thoughts? Man? Uh-oh. Yo, man. Uh-oh. Yo, man. I, again, just like everybody else, something is stupid. Like, you didn't foresee this coming. Like, like you said, when there's rain delays, does the guy not get credit for the for the no-hitter? What happens then? My thing is, this has happened. You've had rain delays. You've had other, you know, earthquakes. You had, you had different things go on as to why you had to halt the game, okay, and not finish it. So why not go in the books? You know what? We need to change this from 27 outs to everybody out. That's all you got to do, plain and simple. But like Mike said, you have some purists. There are are times where people are quick to adapt and want to change because they have some things uh, to go along with it for their own personal gain or whatever. And then you have some things where they just, they are hard-headed and bull-headed into changing things, which for for this stuff like this, you just robbed this man of something. Maybe it doesn't matter to a whole lot of people, okay? Madison Bumgarner will go down as one of the one of the best pitchers to ever pitch. Okay. That was something that could go in his trophy case. That is something that you don't get every day, every time out. Okay. This is not, this is not, oh, he, he struck out five batters. No, no, this is a no hitter. So go ahead, D. And what just what the fuck just happened to just doing the right fucking thing? What the fuck is it? Do, do the right thing. That's the right thing, right? And uh, is it me? Is it me, guys? Just tell no, me. It's, it's, it's not you. Is it me? It's, it's not you. The right thing. But the right is... thing to do is to give the man the no credit for the no hitter. Since y'all changed the shit to seven innings. <laughs> yeah, but this, these, these, are, these are the same people that go to replay and say, "Oh yeah, you know what? We got that wrong. Oh, big deal. Are you going to change it? No. So okay, don't. I don't want to hear your apologies now if you ain't going to change it. Yeah, if you, you know what I'm saying? You, you should have got it right the first time." Uh, Don't wait till three, four days later. Oh, you know what? <laughs> that referee messed that up. Yeah, yeah, but because it's like, what is it going to do for you? You're not going to change it. So what the? Why? We know you fucked up. We already know. Question: When did Madison go, bum go on to get to the to the Diamondbacks? How long he been there? Yeah, when I asked Darryl Darryl that the other day. Like, yeah, I, he, uh, <laughs> yeah because I, I swore that he was still with the Giants, and I was like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell did he get there? All right, so it ain't just me. All right. No, I was yeah, the other, yeah. I, oh, I, I, you got the, the other, yeah, I believe. I'll have to look it up, man. But um, that's a very interesting point that D-Dub wanted to make. D-Dub was very angry about this. He was like, yo, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? But to spice it up a little bit, I'm going to ask the guys on the panel here. I'm going to ask them about their there some of the teams right here. Mike, what's going on with your Mets? Highlight me. The Mets are in first place. And not uh, in- yeah, by a thread and niggas still can't hit. Like they just the pitching been the pitching been solid. So if your pitch only give up two to three runs, you should be able to get that back. Like Ron was dealing this weekend. I, I watched I watched this game weekend and I was like, wow, he was doing something. So yeah, the Mets are nine and eight. They're playing Boston right now. It's one and one. Two to one, two to one, two to two one. Two to one and flush just scored a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, so so the Mets got a hit. They got a hit. They can't rely on Pete to knock it out the park every game. Well, McNeil been hitting, 
McNeil was doing his thing. McNeil has been beaten, been world beaten. He's been doing his thing. But they got to get, Lindor got to wake up. I mean, I know it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I think he's just getting his groove back, um, getting his groove, you know, going from American League to National League. It's not as big as it used to be, but he doesn't face these pitches that, you know, you know. Right, it's a difference. He don't got a rapport with these guys, but so as soon as he wake up, it's going to be a whole different game. Okay, so we got that. So we'll go to we'll go to James Eric. Eric, how's your adopted White Sox? What's going on oh, with the man, White Sox? We're on a four game. I told y'all just to just to be easy. Just pump the brakes. We're on a four game winning streak. We got a twenty one run differential. We out smacking everybody. Kansas City. Um, they in first place right now, but they're looking quite scared now because we're White Sox is two games back. We're tied yes. with uh Detroit right now one one. Yo man. We 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 on course, man. We on course. We on course. Who was one of the biggest um, uh, contributors for the White Sox, uh, Eric? In your opinion? Oh, what's that man's name? Well, first of all, it's the pitching. You gotta you gotta give uh, kudos to uh, what's my man name? Uh, oh, da, 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 Gio. Da, da. What's his name? Um, Gio. Uh, damn, what that dude name? Anyway, yeah, Gio. Yeah, I got to do better. But anyway, yeah, Gio, and they got a bunch of young young talent down there that's smacking Luke, the ball. Luke is Gio Gio Lito. That's Gio Lito. Yeah, there you Lito. go. Yeah. He's, ball, okay? he, he's the one that had the no hitter. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 A few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, I, guess, they, I guess that went nine innings. <laughs> they, they Actually, don't... yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all, he got all, all, all outs, all outs that he needed. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Out, man. But um, yeah, shout out to the White Sox. White Sox are definitely doing their thing. DA, we'll step to you. Your your newly, your Padres went up yeah, to yeah, the, yeah, yeah. We we dealing beef bro. out here. We dealing beef, man. All right. We Yo. addressing all drama, all of it. The Padres did they think this weekend? All right. They, 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 they catch any, any 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 Dodgers anywhere. <laughs> He's still in third place. It's all right. We're gonna be there. <laughs> I just we we right on we right on porch. We're trying to get to man. Don't worry about yeah, that. But, man. Yeah, on, on for real. What do you think about um, Fernando Tatis Jr. Man, what do you, what do you think about his the play? boy can do man. He 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 can play man. He's on that he juice. Play. Yeah, yeah. It's probably his father was on it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> whoa, oh. almost me. Allegedly, get out my allegedly. Gatorade. allegedly. <laughs> but um, so this how we feeling tonight? <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting that, but okay. whoa, whoa. Lord yours, Lord yours, DA. Let me shut up. Go ahead, DA. Go ahead. The reality is this, man. At first, and we'll we'll have another baseball show, but it, all BS aside, these dudes been on steroids or greenies or something for the last forty years, if not longer. All right, so I, I can, you know, it's still not going to help you, you know, put a, 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 a round bat on a round ball. All right, so either you can play or you can't play. And I coordinate you. Yeah, it's, it's either you can play or you can't play. So um, I, I, I like what's happening between those two teams in particular because they're not PC, you know, like they didn't get no problem with having beef, man. And they ain't got no problem running around the base like, yeah, yeah, what? Oh, yeah, and it's going to jump off like the Yankees and the Red Sox. It's going to be an all-out brawl before this season's over. And then we're really going to play some baseball because that, that's when it gets real serious because we got, we got the roster to do it. I mean, we're still younger. Um, the Dodgers have, like, mergers rope. I mean, from pitching to hitting, like, they, they've got it. You right. know, so we, we've just got to stay close. And if we stay close, I think we'll be fine by the end of the year. You know, if we stay close, I think we'll be okay, man. But um, that infield is going to be serious for the next 10 years, man. So I, I don't know if the Dodgers have 10 years worth of dudes. So I, I, I'm good with, 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 with the Padres right where we at right now. My Yankees, we suck. But, Any surprises in the in, in MLB that you thought of, um, um, you can think of, DA? That's, you know, guys. Know <sighs> no, your, your man, Altuve and them is back, man. It's not a game. It's, it's about to be on and popping again with the Astros, B. Y'all can throw out garbage cans on the field or whatever you want. <laughs> They're going to be there at the end of the season. Guaranteeing you that. They They're will only, be there. They're only three and a half back. You know what I'm saying? I, so. I remember yeah. that show, and that was a really good show. We talked about that. Show. That, div They're gonna be that back. division is turnt, though. They hold division? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They hold yeah. division is turnt. Like, that's a... 
That's a bad place to be if your game ain't right. <laughs> yeah, boy, because you'll be assed out. Especially He's the way up. the A's woke up. Yeah, this is that's yeah, a A's are playing the A's are playing really well. I mean, everybody, everybody's everybody's doing pretty. They in the middle of the pack right now. You know, you got Oakland, Seattle, Los Angeles, the Angels, and uh, the Astros. Texas is only one that's six games back. So, but even six games is not really nothing. No, not at this. So, point. It, you know, it's it's again like I'm. That's I'm not jumping out the window with the Yankees. It's a, this is a marathon. It's still early, man. They, Yankees are not. Go Yankees are nine to thirteen, man. So you know they are playing Baltimore right now, and you know these are the games that they should win. They win now, I think, four to one. So uh, you win the games that you're supposed to win. So you know they they Yankees have their problems, but again, later on down the season, you know you take the series. You know you ain't got to win every game. You just got to win the series of every series that you play. Yeah, that should put you over the top or close to it. So uh, right now, you know, uh, the with the uh, Red Sox got the command and lead right now, and uh, like I said, the Yankees is only what three and a half, I believe, back. So uh, you know, it's it, again still early, a marathon, four and a half back. So you know, uh, I'm gonna shout out the National League Central. Uh, <clears throat> the Cubs and the Reds are currently two games behind 500, but they only three games out. That that division is tough. Yeah. Um, it's always, I mean, it's good to see the Pirates actually at 500 at this far in the season, but uh, yeah. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it's at least it's good to see. If you're, if you're a baseball fan, you know, I don't know when they started this talk, right, about, right. you know, in the NBA, oh, it's good to see the Lakers, it's good to see the Knicks, you know, good to see them winning, it's good for the league. Well, me being a baseball fan, it's just some of them teams that is just like, why are the Pirates so bad? So at least even at 500, it's, a, it's good it's to see stop. them in it's some contention. Yeah. The Pirates, I don't know how long, don't know how long it's going to last, but. The Pirates systematically blow, blow themselves up every two years. I mean, they had a couple good years in the middle. When they had McCutcheon there, they had a little crew. They had but, McCutcheon. Before McCutcheon, remember when Jason Bay and what's his name was out there? They had a couple. But remember, they had a couple years. Right after the All-Star break, though. Yeah, they they they, they yeah, they either trade trade mofos bad, away. Bad deals, yeah. Bad deals. And I mean the Pirates, truth be told, I mean, they should have uh they probably should have had a world a world championship but already. McCutcheon was an MVP, am I correct? McCutcheon? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, he won, uh, he, I think he won so. an MVP. Yeah. Yeah. So the Pirates were good a few years ago. And yeah. I'm like, E, sometimes I want to pull for the guys that's, you know. That, no, hasn't, I, that hasn't won. That, that, that's you know, they're looking for. I, you, you know, know one of the, you know, what's going mm-hmm. on. So it's, um, I, I enjoy baseball. I, I really do. Um, I'm glad that we talk about it on the show. I'm glad that we're informed on it and we're prepared. And we just don't write it off and say, oh, baseball is boring. Nah, Shit, somebody you know, got to talk about it. Because, uh, yeah. Well, but. whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll be back next week. Like we said, we'll talk more in depth about baseball. But now here we want to get to the meat and potatoes. And tonight, we want to get to the National Football League draft. I wish I had my music, but I don't have my music queued up. We'll start with, no, I'll start with, I'll start with this. Where these people could be possibly going. So, I got here pulled up by CBS Sports. Um, the all, all people we mess with, CBS. <laughs> um, <laughs> the top 10 here. So we got Trevor Lawrence, quarterback from Clemson. We got Justin Fields, quarterback from Ohio State. We got, you got Panay Sewell, the Oregon, um, from Oregon, the offensive lineman. You got Jamal Chase, the wide receiver from LSU. Um, you got Levante, Levante Smith from Alabama. Um, Hold on a second, line. I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. Kyle Pitts tie in from Florida. You got Michael Parsons, linebacker from Penn State. Zach Wilson from BYU, quarterback. Mac Jones, quarterback from Alabama. And you got Jalen uh, Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. Uh, Alabama always turns out really good wide receiver. Always, always. So what's we'll, we'll, so, we'll just we'll just start right there at ten, and uh, we'll just take it from there. So we'll go to our general manager extraordinaire, Mike Mills. Mike, who you think is going to do what, 
And what do you think? And we'll, we'll grade the draft next week too. Who do you think? Who do you think should do what? And whatever the case, what's your opinion on the draft, man? Let's talk about the draft. I mean, one, two, three is solidified, of course. You know, Jacksonville. Well, now I'm not gonna say three. One and two is definitely solidified. You know, Jacksonville's taking Trevor Lawrence because who wouldn't? Like only okay. Jack. You know, you know why am I saying that? Because only Jacksonville could mess this up. But you Jets? know, they could definitely mix this up. The Jets, uh, they like they seem to like Zach Wilson at two. I don't see it. Maybe they see something. I don't. I don't think he's gonna be bad. But this is Sam Donald all over again. Um, Wait. Okay. Stop. Why do you think it's Sam Donald again? Do you do you not think Sam Donald could play, or you think Sam Donald was in a jacked up situation? I think Sam Donald ended up in a bad spot from the beginning. And Fast. you know what? On this show, we talk about how sometimes depends on where you go, it could absolutely mess up your destiny as being either good, <clears throat> bad, or indifferent. And James Eric is shaking his head. Go ahead, Eric. Just chime in real quick. I, 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 I've said it all the time, man. You you can have a great talent that goes into a dead pit of a damn team, and you don't see you don't see or hear nothing else from them. I mean, <clears throat> hence Josh Rosen a couple of years ago. He goes to Arizona. Um, they got rid of the 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 head coach after one year. They bring another guy in. He has his guy, you know, so they ship Rosen out. He goes to a different, I think he went to Miami. Did, things yeah. didn't work there. He goes to, I don't know if he went to San Diego. He I went somewhere and still. Yeah, I think yeah, it was San Diego. And, yeah, and it's just, it's, 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 it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Like the guy never got a, he never got a chance. So it all depends. It, it, it all depends, man, because sometimes just because it, it should be a fix, like Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence, I think is is a pro. I think he'll be good. Will he be good for Jacksonville? John will tell. But. So let me just pull up with um, a couple guys from CBS Sports. So um, for Ryan Wilson, he's got Trevor Lawrence going to um, to, to the Jaguars. He's got um, Zach Wilson going to the, uh, to the Jets. Mac Jones going to the Niners. Dorian, where you at? Um, yeah, that's not gonna happen, man. So, <laughs> excuse me. As an Arizona Cardinal fan, I hope that happens. But go ahead. Yeah. As a football um, fan, I don't like that pick. I mean, it's not gonna happen, man. I already tell you what's gonna happen, man. It's gonna but, bug everybody what, else. You don't like Zach Wilson, Wilson going to the Niners? That's what y'all no. saying? Yeah, I don't. Uh, Mike what's Jones, gonna happen Jones. is I don't gonna like Wilson is, going there either. But <laughs> yeah, what's gonna happen is the Jets is the one that's actually playing dudes. They're gonna take Justin Fields. Well, if the Jets take Justin Fields, that would be the most an yeah, intelligent decision they've the ever made in the last yeah. maybe 15 to 20 years. Well, that's the Jets what are going to take them, and they, I they, don't see it happening. Then they're going to leave the 49ers with having to take a bad quarterback. So it's going to have to be Trey. Because if you want somebody that can win right now, it has to be someone that can run for their lives. And Justin Fields is that dude. So, yeah, well, he'll be with the Jets, though. So, he'll be so, gone. So, Trevor, so Chris, Chris uh, Tra Trapasso from um, CBS Sports said this is his first couple of picks. He's had Trevor Lawrence going to Clem oh, excuse me, going to Jacksonville, Zach Wilson going to the Jets, Justin Fields going to the Niners. I'll take that. See, now I got I got a different one now. I got Justin Fields going to the Jets, yeah, Zach Wilson going, go. going three. Now, My, if, if according to the According to this draft, uh, mock draft, all I think I'll care about is number 11. And if this number 11 pick comes out, then we get Devontae Smith. I, I think that's where everybody's. Well, I'm happy. All these three guys is picking Devontae Smith, and uh, I want to give everybody the credit. Josh Edwards from CBS Sports is stating that. Um, Quiddy Pay from Michigan State, the Giants are going to select. I, 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 yeah, I know. And, and, and God knows that Jamal Chase is there. Yeah. He ain't falling that far. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't think the Giants need him. So we don't need who? Uh, wide receiver? Yeah. yeah I don't I mean, think you need that high. No, nah, I, I don't think you'll need it. That's just my opinion. What you think they need? A linebacker. Yeah, we could always go defense. Yeah, you can never go wrong with defense. I if, could see a guy, linebacker there. If a if a Dude linebacker was, if a linebacker is there, I, I I'm I'm not mad at that either. Well, Quiddy Dude Pay from Penn State, B. 
Quiddy Pay is a defensive lineman from Michigan who's ranking real high, so that's why he picked him. And he's saying that the Giants do need some defense. Now, okay. we also have to take with a grain of salt that with these drafts, you get a lot of these old-time idiots that are not ranking dudes high that didn't play last season. So they already they've already said on four or five different shows that the linebacker from Penn State, if he's not the number one best player in this draft, he's the number two best player in this draft. Oh, you talk right. who are we talking about? Makai Parsons? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Parsons. He, yeah, he didn't play last year. He didn't play last year. That's why they dissed him, because he sat out. Dude's a monster. Like I've wow. seen him win college games damn near by himself. So yeah, he's a beast. That kid can play. Um, well, then they got him sliding to 17. Yeah, yeah. well, that's because he didn't play this year. You mm -hmm. know? And dudes are actually still mad at that. Like, why didn't you play? COVID? COVID, motherfucker. Shit. Yeah. So. They got him about mm -hmm. 17. Same, same reason you didn't go to the doctor's fucking office. And fucking yeah, COVID. right? <laughs> <laughs> shit, why you didn't go to the dentist, motherfucker? COVID. COVID. <laughs> same shit. <laughs> you know? But, um, yeah, I think, I, I think that the Giants got one good thing. Um, the Redskins did pick up. Uh, what's your boy, man? You should be a left tackle for you. Flowers. Yeah, I seen that. Uh, so y'all, y'all, yeah. y'all gonna be able to get them because Flowers can't <laughs> block shit. So <laughs> he can't block a fucking thing. So you know. Uh, shout out to Eric Flowers, man. Yo, he tried. He tried, man. But it, it just, he, he gonna try this year too. He <laughs> yeah, gonna try. I, he, I he guess. Gonna try. So. <laughs> He gonna try I don't know what it is. I don't. I, listen, I've never played the, the offensive line. I never played the game like that at a high level. But for you to be that 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 awful, man. Yeah, I mean, yo, like the Giants tried everything. They moved him from one side. They moved it to the next side. Right to the center. To the side. Inside. Yo, he cannot get right. He cannot get right at all. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's another coach out there that could get to his. You know inside his head to get him to understand how to play this game. Yeah, boy, Riverboat, Riverboat. Well, go to Tennessee. They're known for their offensive linemen. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for y'all though, real quick. Go ahead. Julio Jones' name, I don't know if y'all heard it, but Julio Jones' name has been thrown out there about up. trade bait. Absolutely. Do y'all think that could be uh, implicated in some draft moving? Go ahead, Green Mike. Bay. You think Green Bay for Julio? If he could, then then Green Bay gonna win the title, but I don't think he's gonna. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think some underachiever gonna get him. Somebody that don't need him, that ain't got no business going to get him. Like Jacksonville, they got extra. They got an extra first round pick. They got an extra yeah. pick. That's pretty decent. They don't need him, but they might go get him just because. How much, how much is Julio Jones worth as a as a, as a pick? Well, what are you trading for? I wouldn't trade no a top second round pick in a bag of chips. In a Michelob light. I don't even know about second round. Maybe third. Man. A nah. third for Julio? Y'all are bugging. Nah, because nah, you, you, Julio. Uh, y'all going, going off of Julio. Y'all going off of Julio back, back then. I'm talk, Let's talk about Julio no, now. No, no. Julio now. back then would be two first round picks. To me, Julio late, now to I me? think you get at least you get a late second for Julio. I say late second, late, late. first, early second. Nah, late second, nah, early third. First for no Julio. Nah, I was, if, I was if let me who who's a team that could use them right now? Green Bay. Green Bay, yeah, Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay the, or the um, Colts. Nah, the Colts. They, I think they got enough, right? The, the they, Colts they could, got. They can always take it, right? So you never, you, you can never <laughs> say you won't need a. a, a they got what? They got the young guy Russell. Pitts. They got Ty. Ty kind of old. Yeah, you yeah. need enough more to see. I mean, they I got, know who. They got good Right Baltimore. Oh yeah, Indeed. facts. E. Yeah, we can't facts. If anybody needs a a, a wide out, they need because that Mike, guy he knows he, how to run Mike, routes. Mike, are you he, open. Now? he needs you ready? Who? We can't afford him. I'm not even. Yeah, yeah you right. Playing Mike. with that idea, we can't afford him. Well, you're right, Mike. Because the guys, because we, we got to play Lamar next year. We just gave. We extended the fifth year. Cool. We still got to pay him. That's coming. Whatever that's coming. And like, we can't afford him. If we was going to get a receiver, it should have been this year. But Juju wanted to go be towel boy some more and go dance. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Juju is proven to not be a bright guy. So. Right. Um, he want to go Julio dance Jones. for Roethlisberger. Julio Jones last year, he had 771 receiving yards. 
Um, last year, we racked up six touchdowns in 15 games. Hey, how many games? What, man? Uh, 15. He played he that played many? Yeah, he played, he played 15 last year? He was on the sideline 15 yeah. games. Nine games. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. yeah that sounds about right. There we go. Nine games. That was I'm, about to, I, I'm about to call HR. Look into them PTO <laughs> days. Hey, I ain't see that nigga at work. Yeah. Come on. If he has 1,700 <laughs> yards, no, if he has 700 yards in 15 games, then yeah, go ahead and fourth and third and yeah. fourth round pick. <laughs> you know, he, he, no, 771 yards in nine games. And he knew they was he knew they was bad. So I feel like he sat out some of them games. If they good, you know Julio play through the injury. Julio don't yeah. really sit when they good. But if they bad, he'd be like, I'm not playing. What am I playing for? If they would have had like eight, nine wins, Julio would have played. Yeah, I think that I think he ain't gonna go. He gotta go somewhere he can win. So believe me, right. he's just not gonna go anywhere. And you gotta have enough to trade Atlanta back. So you know, you gotta have you gotta have enough to give them back. So. Or the Chargers, give them to yeah. the Chargers. But they got a bunch of receivers though, don't they? They got Mike receivers. Williams and they got they got Keenan Allen. Yeah, but you could package one of them in. If you yeah. you I trade one of them for Julio in. Yeah. Chargers need a, a, a running back that can uh, two running backs that can last a whole year. Definitely. And O line, work on that line a little bit. <clears throat> let me let me let me we'll get back to the draft real quick. Let me go to some of the NFL rule changes. The NFL changed some of his rules last um this upcoming um they had a meeting last week up in New York. On Park Avenue, and some of the rule changes they said was no more preseason overtime. I don't know why they play preseason football anyway, and make you pay max money to go watch the game, which is insane. Onside kicks might be easier for one year only. The NFL will establish a maximum number of players in the setup zone. That's the area that the, between the 10 and the 25 yards from the kickoff spot. Under this rule, only nine players on the receiving team will be allowed to set up zone during kickoffs, which will theoretically make it easier for the kicking team to recover an onside kick. Under the old rule, the receiving team could put 10 or 11 players in the setup zone for more details on this change, blah, blah, blah. Replay official has more power, whatever. Penalties on extra points are now more consistent. A rule has been approved that ensures the enforcement of all accepted penalties committed by the either team during a successive try Attempt. If the team gets penalized on the extra point, it can take the penalty at the two yard line or 15 yard line. If it gets penalized again, the penalty has to be enforced from wherever the first penalty was enforced. So it has to be a false start or a two point conversion. It could have, it could, have, excuse me, it could have that enforced at the two or 15 yard line if it has the second false start. If no longer gets an option, it will be enforced. On the spot of the first penalty. That sounds confusing as hell. Last but not least, and this is the one that DW again texted me one morning and was just mad. Yeah, this guy wakes up mad, man. We gotta give him some Cuban coffee, man. we will be straight. Mm-hmm. But this is the one, and I think James Eric sent it to him. I, I, I don't know how it went, but it got to me, and it, it was just the NFL relaxes its rules for jersey numbers. The, all, the NFL also has approved the rule to give plays at certain positions, expanded jersey number options. This will allow running backs, receivers, linebackers, defensive backs to wear number one through 19 for a full look at the number option, blah, blah, blah. So, DW, since you was upset, what do you think about these number changes? Yo, just like I said before, this, this again, I, I think I think I was just as mad as Tom Brady was. Yeah, I mean, that's how that's how stupid this is. And he says, good luck is looking at football because it's going to be a lot of bad plays. People not knowing what numbers, who, blah, blah, blah. You know, it gets confusing. That's why, I mean, they had a system with the numbers for a reason. And. Oh, but the the players should be allowed to wear whatever number they want. You are just (sighs) what football doesn't want. They've never had that. So how could they, they've never had that. You could never just wear any number you wanted. No, it's too many people on a football team. Yeah. It's too many people on a football field. The motherfuckers gonna be thrown into the officials, man. That's how that's how bad it probably might be. James, Eric, go ahead, man. When all I'm gonna say is this: when said favorite quarterback, i.e., 
Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. They don't care about Russell that much. Um, my man Allen up in uh, Josh Allen up in uh, Buffalo. When one of them guys get hit from the blind side because they thought number six was a damn uh, cornerback and it was a damn edge rusher and the guy's out for the season. And when you see one or more of those guys get hurt, you're going to see a whole lot of pushback on this uh, on this rule change. Yeah, I think it's absolutely stupid, but that's let, just me, let me read this real quick. Maybe it's because the oldest player in the NFL and he's against change, or maybe it's because he hates new rules, but whatever the reason is, Brady made it clear on Instagram last week that he's against the new rule. Brady's biggest issue with the number change is that he thinks it's going to lead to what DW said, bad football, and I quote, good luck trying to block the right per- right people now. Brady wrote on Instagram, this is going to make a lot of bad football. Yo, one, one thing, Kev. Out of all, out of all the rule changes that you could have possibly made, Y'all came up with this, change the numbers. Just, just let that sink in. Change the numbers. That, that out of all the rule changes that you could have made in this in this sport, change the numbers. That was the that was the. Uh, you uh, have no issue with LeBron wearing twenty three. He, should, he, he shouldn't wear twenty three. Shouldn't nobody wear twenty three? Twenty three should be retired throughout the league, just like forty two in, in baseball. Be, okay. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. If you play the quarterback position, okay, he could be it is hard enough. Now. It is it is hard enough to get your O lineman, um, the, the protection schemes right. You got to call out where the linebacker is. You do all this. You do all this research where these guys come from. This snap the third. It's easy calling out 55 than it is one. Okay. So now that you have all of these rule changes, you it's hard to keep up with. Okay, Khalil Mack wears what fifty two. What if he changes number to 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 seven? Oh, you know what I'm saying. So it's it's of course you know once you once he sacks you, you gonna know who he is. But come on, man. I mean, and I know these people. People gonna say it's much to do to nothing. We make it. We just. We just making this up, and these guys are smarter than what you give them credit. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not, all right. I'm not going to say like shit. Like I said, when when, uh, when when that quarterback gets hurt, I don't want to hear shit. I don't want to hear he, damn he, You know it's going to come, and I, I'm nope. I'm <laughs> not saying nothing. This is this is it. This is what y'all want. Go ahead, D. Yeah, I'm done. I if, if I may, and yeah, I know. Plays for Devontae Adams. All the, the reality is this, man. Um, the the NFL. They are scrambling, man, to, to give players, people, anybody, anything because they added another fucking game. They're going to do whatever it takes to make it look good because they added another fucking game. Is that what they're telling you? Is that? That's, yes, is yes. That... It's 17 games this year. Why? Oh, because they want more money. Oh, wait a minute, but you care about the players. Get the fuck out of it. You know what? This is what I'm telling you. Know this is what I'm saying, fellas. The answer is the same. See, money is, and money. They taking away some of the appeal. The 16 games is the appeal. What is 17 games? It's going to be a whole bunch of funky, nasty well, records. Well, you, you know what? It's uh, 50,000 people in the stadium at... Everything twenty five dollars a piece. Yeah, Teams going ninety eight, nine and eight, nine and eight. Sound nasty. You know, Teams, not, 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 not only that. You know what? Eight. You know what's going to happen? And I'm not. I don't even have a problem. They do it. Low management, and in, in week seventeen, wow. week sixteen, week eighteen. This shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're gonna do it early. Well, you know what, right. Kev? You know what? I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck because you know what? I'm not going to these games. And you know what? Y'all want a fucking low management. Y'all can low management all you fucking want because I'm not going to pay for the shit. And I'm, I'm I'm saying from the standpoint that yeah, I get I get it. I get what you're saying, guy. That that they they need that they're going to have to because now you added another game, right? Mm-hmm. Six seven years ago, we had that movie. What was that movie Will Smith was in the concussion? What was it called? What, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, CTE concussion. movie. Yeah. yeah. But the, but the, this is my the, the hypocrisy is so. So now we move to. 
18, what was it, 17 game schedule, 18 weeks, and you're changing, and like like James Eric said, yo, you're changing. I don't want to hear anything. Like you said, when the edge rusher is wearing number three, and he's coming <laughs> off the edge. And he kills you. you. Know, and, and see, and see what, what, what we do on this show, we talk what we know. So if you don't understand blocking schemes and all that stuff, get to know it. Go on YouTube. You setting up pass protection. When that quarterback calls out that cadence, he's he's doing it for a reason. He's not doing it. It sounds great. It sounds funny when uh, you know when Peyton Manning or, or Tom Brady, you know Brady and his eyeball, da, 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 da. yeah, you know he yells out that stuff. He's doing it for a reason. Now yeah. it's gonna be very hard. You watch like, Patrick yeah. Mahomes. You, That's you nasty too. Quarterbacks running around with seventy-seven like Luka Doncic. Nasty. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So here, this lies in the problem. And yes, we look way ahead before things happen. I, I, I love this show for us because that's what we do. We're not caught up in the moment. We And we're just, as in the words of Dorian, I like to use this thing, we're quantitative thinkers. Well, apparently, Major League Baseball is it because they <laughs> didn't see that coming. But anyway. But let me finish. So yeah. So like James Eric said, you know, you got the edge rusher. He's wearing number six. Oh, shoot. Nobody picks up number six. But here you come. Steam steam trucking your new quarterback that you just drafted. And 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 not only that, I just I just thought of uh when we had when we had your man on that was a safety a uh, couple couple of months yeah, Gene, back. Shout out to my man Gene Fedor. Yeah. Yes, sir. So the safety on the flip side for the defense got to call these plays out. So when you on the goal line. And you trying to keep the offense out of the out of the end zone, and you have the eligible receiver is wearing, and they still got whatever you. number in there. You still got to declare them though. So, oh, I was about to say, so true. Hey, yeah, yeah, but at, the, still, at the same time, it's still going to cause confusion. We already know these guys get paid millions of dollars, and they're confused every week of the season. So that's only going to add to it. Number seven is the eligible receiver. Wait a minute, I thought he was, you know. Hey, Number 17 hey, is split out wide and it's, hey, it's, it's, listen, it's not Josh hey, Allen. If, so. if you think it can't happen, if you think you can't happen. We're just forward Mr. thinkers, people. Donovan McNabb didn't know there was a, you could tie in, in fucking uh, <laughs> in, in football. So if you think it can't happen, you think it, it, something can't like this happen, okay. I remember you, that. You think that all these players, these are the same players that they didn't know they could jump over the ball after 10 yards. Exactly. I remember that. They were, oh, I didn't know. Forward you know. thinking. That's what we But do. the game just ended. <laughs> no, it did. Yeah, I thought we keep playing. We don't keep yeah. playing until it's a winner. No, I'm, I'm just saying. But, you know, what the fuck we know? We just, you know. <laughs> but back to the draft, though. My question is, Go ahead, Mike. Kyle, is Kyle Pitts. Do y'all believe the hype? No, nah, he's nice. He's good. I think he's good, but do you think he's good the way they talking, like top five at it tight end? I don't think I haven't on, seen enough of him. Depends, so on, depends on the need. Depends on where yeah. he goes to. Yeah, yeah, if you're playing a system that he's an H-back, or if he's playing a system that he's really a tight end and got a block. Because he hadn't blocked the last three years in school. So Let, let, let him go to Atlanta. You got Julio. They if they don't trade Julio, you got Julio on the outside. You got uh, your Ridley on the outside, wide open in the middle. He can catch anything though. He a big kid. He can play. Atlanta already got a good. They got a straight tight end too. You put him and Hayden Hurst together. That's that's nasty. Yeah. Well, but yeah. Atlanta need defense. Like that's their problem. Badly. Yeah, badly. That they go for the shiny stuff and don't well, go for the cogs and the keys. They unless 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 uh, there's a defensive coordinator out there that they can draft. That ain't gonna happen. I don't care who they get. <laughs> A defensive quarterback that you can draft. That's that's on the owner, man. You know, he just want to keep that building uh, 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 packed. But he don't care about winning because he could have. It's not that hard. Keep the lights it's on. So, hard, man. Yeah, so. so keep the lights on. Yeah, it's really not that hard, man. Keep the light. <laughs> keep the lights on. But um, should be a very very um interesting NFL football draft. I look forward to it. Draft takes place over the weekend. Thursday night. Thursday night is going First down. Where, where is the draft at again this Cleveland. year? Cleveland. It's in Cleveland. How are they doing it in Cleveland? Who wants to do anything in Cleveland? 
Hey, they're, they're moving them out, Mike. Don't disrespect them. Don't, we might have to be in Cleveland one day. Do it at Radio City like they've been doing and just leave it alone. Like, why are they? Why yeah. is this a thing? Well, Mike, they're not having large gatherings in New York City right now with some of that stuff. So we got to think Indeed. about it. So, yeah, I, actually, I kind of like, I, I do, I think the NFL do has have it right as far as that, as far as getting fans involved. I do. I kind of, I kind of enjoy it. I mean, when they, when they, when they did it in uh, Tennessee, it was really cool. So, I, 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 I remember I'll give them that. I remember. I might be dating Asian myself. I remember when the NBA draft was free, and you can go to the Phil Forum. Dorian probably remembers that. Yep. Oh, yeah. the NBA draft. Yeah. yeah the NBA draft. The NBA. Oh, no more. Yeah. Well, that was, <laughs> back then it was a better time, so you know it was. Better, true, true. You right. You right. My bad. My bad, Kevin. My, my bad. The product was the product was better. I know. I understand. I'm the I mean, old. I thought we were talking about the NFL draft. Uh, this guy goes in the NBA draft. <laughs> hey, my bad. My bad. I digress. Right. I digress. My bad. My bad. My I bad. like the NBA right. drafts. Right. It's grand opening, grand closing. We're not sitting here for three days. They need yeah. to. But Mike, yeah, I don't know why they split football in the huh? Mike, it's more players. You're not gonna be there all night drafting. Nah, but three days. Was it used to be two, right? No, nah, it was always. Nah, three. Been, Why is it three days? Three. It Mike, they gotta get. They gotta get out and hug Goodell, man. Come on, you know he got his COVID shot, so he. Good, why man. is the and then why they do first? Oh, why don't they do first and second? Why they just do the first on the first night? That's such like a tease and it's corny. It's like, come on, bro. They should do and then first three rounds on the first night. I agree. Yeah, nah, I don't know. Uh, that mean they would have to shorten the time for the first round. But I mean, well, they, some, they know who they're gonna take anyway. Exactly, yeah, that's, that's what I'm true. saying. I mean, yeah. all the, I mean, it's five it's five like, minutes ah. per, yeah, five <laughs> minutes per each. I mean, you, you can it's, shorten it's, that. Now, if anything, you want shorten that? How about that? You could just shorten that to two yeah, minutes. Yeah, maybe ain't one gonna two gonna minute. Be, it's gonna be a mad scramble when uh when when number when San Fran picks uh your man out of uh, Ohio Mac State. Mac Jones? Oh, they, nah, they they gonna mess the whole draft up for the next ten slots. Hold on, Kev. I know you about, we're about to go wrap it up. D, did we say Mac Jones? For or you want Justin Fields? Justin Fields is going to the Niners unless the Jets take him first. Okay. So what is this Mac Jones? I don't know. any. See, Alabama. I don't know why any any quarterback from Alabama is. Well, you know, they could. I mean, man. pick me, pick me. I thought the dude, I thought it was stupid. So I. I <laughs> Like I said, before the draft started, he wasn't even the second rounder. So you shouldn't really get like people like him and they say he's, they use all these, and I'm gonna say it, man, these quote unquote racist terms, man. You say uh, high so football saying. IQ, he's smart, he knows the plays. Or come on, dude, listen. You played for the school and college that had the best players that everybody was open by 15 yards every throw. So what they you're saying win. is, so what you're saying is, all of us collectively could do to any one of these wide receivers because they yeah, have yeah, the best yeah. players, the best talent. Their steroids are better than your steroids. Okay, all right, Mac Jones, Mac Jones. Daryl, all you need, to, all you need to know is this: Mac Jones is Daniel Jones. So if somebody trade up and, <laughs> and draft him, they're gonna have the same problem. I, I, I'm gonna leave it at that. Nobody, just like Dorian said, nobody was talking about Mac Jones. I'm that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, I know he played for Alabama, but I, like, okay, but you got the best, best of the best. Yeah. So, you know. Well, did did the Jets have what was what was the Jets have? They they drafted him as a as a second round, not a second round, but he has a second three. Um, I forgot a couple of years ago when Alabama was really really good and they had him receivers. I can't think of the guy's name, but he he played on the Jets. You told him, uh, it starts with an M. I can't think of his name. Mims. Uh, Oh, nah, McCorkle, something like that. McCarran? McCarran, yes. Oh. AJ McCarran. Oh, you talking about quarterback? Oh. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that was the last of the bad quarterbacks, I guess. Oh. And AJ no, was. They, they still had Coca. They won a championship with Coca. Yeah, they did. Uh, but they had a hell of a fire defense that year. The one thing I do like about the NFL draft, because it's like these, I like watching these guys be swearing that these guys are so good and they'd be somebody like, you know, they was talking about Herbert, and I remember her, they was talking Herbert. Herbert, Herbert, Justin Her Herbert's going to be the guy. And then all of a sudden, Herbert gets blindsided, ends up going, uh, what? San Diego. Uh, San Diego, but later then, and, and Herbert had the best year. 
Yeah. Hey, because they gave yeah. my man Tyrod the needle in the in the lung thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yes. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to the LA. Oh God. Just not the San Diego Charger, but yeah, we wish yeah. they go back to San Diego. We pray that they go back to San Diego. Um, shout out to the New York Rangers. They won it three to one in the second. Uh, excuse me, in the third period against. They the- always gonna be the San Diego Chargers. I don't care where they at. They go to Santa Barbara. They could go to Vallejo. <laughs> They could go wherever. Them is the San Diego Chargers. They won't be like the Angels when change the name every other year. Them is the Anaheim Angels. I don't care what nobody say. Well, Mike, you might be a little little bit younger than us. I remember when they was the California Angels. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Anaheim just sound better. Them the Anaheim Angels. Yeah, they they had changed so much, man. It's like, yeah, I don't know. They go back and forth. San Diego California. go to Anaheim too, but they gonna be San Diego. They just California gonna be thing. Anaheim. <laughs> they all paying for that big new stadium, so yeah. Well, they are gonna be in Inglewood, and these like, the Inglewood charges sound better than the L.A. charges. Well, we'll we'll see. Well, we're gonna wrap up here on that <laughs> note. <Awkward> silence. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> Inglewood Charlie charges. Inglewood. Mm. No good. <laughs> That's no good. Don't put them there if you don't want them there. <laughs> Mike Mills, where can we find that? You find that, sir? The Sports Chasers Podcast everywhere except for Twitter. That's Chasers Sports. But IG Sports Chasers Podcast, SoundCloud, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want to find us, we out there. That's true. Thank you, thank you. Party shots. We'll, we'll, we'll go with my man, the angry one, James Eric. Go ahead, sir. Yo, man, another great week of the Sports Chasers podcast. Um, very, very, very good uh, episode tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I just want to give a special shout out to my man, Rack Runners. It's my son-in-law. Shout out to him. He has some personal things going on, man. Nothing but love and prayers out for you, man, and the family, man. It's going to be hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, prayers and prayers and right runners, K. Prayers, uh, uh, Mike Mills, party shots, sir. Shout out to the brand we know and love. What's well, a little bright, but Saturday, you already know the vibes. Uh, we could not too. Um, if on sa- at Saturday, wherever you, wherever you like to shop or wherever you like to surf the internet, any social media platform you looking, and shout out to. Nothing too heavy today. Shout out to Jacob DeGrom. He has been pitching like his head is on fire. That boy's like on fire. He is, he is on fire. That's and it's not even the first. Everywhere, everybody's scary the first way through the lineup. But that second and third time when they get used to you and you still striking them out, shout out yeah. to him. And that's He's it. officially labeled heat maker. He is a heat maker. He's on fire. Yeah. DA, Paul Shasson. Um, don't, folks, don't don't readily enlist yourselves to be part of someone's marketing experiment. You know, don't don't just blow with the weeds. You know, every time they put a new team or or a new player, you know, read on your own. Try to figure it out. Because believe me, I watch this shit and I think it's a joke because they're not talking about these people and then the next thing you know, they're talking about these people and the next thing you know, now you're drafting this guy. And you're like, Yo, this dude was on 118th Street yesterday. Mm-hmm. How is he a quarterback? You know, just do your own research, man. That's it, everyone, just do your own research. But that's it, guys. Have a great week. God bless you. Um, one of my parting shots, I just wanted to know, I, I, I know we said we talk about all sports and we try to, and we do. Um, shout out to hockey. They are, National Hockey League will be ending a long relationship with the, with NBC and Turner Networks will be picking up hockey and broadcasting. So as I said, Turner, TNT and TBS will play in the neighborhood of, get this, 225 million plus per season over the next seven years. While ESPN plus per season over the seven years, while ESPN's numbers is around 400 million per year and includes an extra cup and out of market subscription rights. So if you got ESPN plus, I guess 
you rock on with hockey. Uh, but games will be on Turner, excuse me, TNT and TBS. Let me talk about it. Mm. <laughs> oh, awkward silence. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was my <laughs> muted. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> yo, yo, Eric has been devastated tonight, man. He's been. But um, shout out, man. I, I I really love what I do. Sometimes this thing called life sometimes gets in the way makes things tougher but um we're all stronger than what we think and i love every week 90 minutes we get into this we talk passionately about sports i really love what i do i love the guys on this show love them to death and um we all together we form as voltron as as they say and we make this thing work man so like i said you know not to get i ain't the pink line in case anybody wondering (laughs) i'm not the pink line (laughs) Just want to make that clear. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yo, yeah. man. Yo, he had to destroy. Yeah, all right, and that was the Sports Chasers podcast. Woo! <laughs> Shut it down. I don't know who was him or Da. I don't know. Just I don't know. They've been going in tonight, man. Tonight, yeah. Just just shut it down. <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm going to sleep now anyway. So it's all what good. What a bad <laughs> Oh man, on behalf of myself, I'm Kevin O'Rourke, your host and moderator. James Eric, D Dub, Daryl D Dub Warren, and for Mike Mills. Yo, this is the Sports Chasers Podcast, man. Yo, we'll see y'all next Peace. week. Y'all have a good one. Mills Kuiper Jr. <laughs> Mills Kuiper Yo, Jr. That dude is wrong every year, and he keeps it <laughs> Yo, man, he's like a weatherman, yo. Oh, you don't say nothing about the guys on CNBC when they predict what is going on with GameStop. Nobody watches them. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, don't know. Yeah. I like C- CNBC, but you know, they, they, I, they get it wrong sometimes. Some of these channels, I don't even know why they cover sports. Yeah, like yeah. CBS, why? Who cares? They, they broadcast value is terrible. You ever watch a game? On CBS, it's like being at your grandmother's house on Thanksgiving back in the day. Like it's <laughs> horrible and it's grainy. It's like why? Dog, they used to be good, man. They used to have good announcers, but the announcers is old. They don't, you know. If it ain't on Fox, I'll be like, I ain't watching this. Well, you know what, man? Dudes fall in love with Tony Romo and all the shit he talking. I'm like, yo, if he could just do half of the shit he talked about when he was a player. Okay. <laughs> that would have had about four, four Super Bowls. Hell yeah, just have. He made some good little predictions like, yeah, he's going to slant left and go right. Yo, he's gonna this hit is the what I'm saying. He well, knows until he, he gets it. it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Knows like, why you didn't do it, it. Mofo? Yeah. <laughs>